So what is um, premature ovarian failure? Uh, and how does it contrast with um, premature ovarian insufficiency or what we sometimes call premature ovarian aging? Um, ovarian failure means that your ovaries have stopped producing follicles. So it's actually the case of entering menopause. Premature ovarian failure is entering menopause before the age of 40. So only 1% of women uh, will lose their normal menstrual function before the age of 40. So it's a very uncommon uh, condition in the world. Um, it's something that we see frequently because of what we do, um, because people come here uh, because of this. Um, so uh, to give an example, if you're 43 and you no longer have your period, that's not premature ovarian failure because the normal distribution of normal menopause can extend from the early 40s all the way up to the late 50s, if you think of it as a bell curve. <coughs> so premature ovarian failure is loss of your menstrual period uh, before the age of 40. And we see women in their 20s and 30s who have true uh, POF. Um, just uh, for contrast, uh, premature ovarian insufficiency or premature aging um, would be somebody who has normal menstrual function but whose ovaries are not functioning at as high a level as their age a specific uh, cohort. So um, you could be still having a normal period, normal menstrual function, um, be uh, in your early 30s, um, but you might have evidence from your um, ovarian reserve parameters, FSH, AMH, um, uh, antral follicle count, uh, numbers of eggs you've produced in previous uh, IBS stimulations that suggest that you have premature ovarian insufficiency or premature ovarian aging. Um, that's not premature ovarian failure. Premature ovarian failure is no more periods. What are the causes of premature ovarian failure? Well, there are any number of them. Um, <clears throat> an obvious one is obviously if you have some surgery um, and you've had your ovaries removed, <laughs> you won't have ovarian function. But um, even if you've had uh, surgery in your ovaries to remove a cyst or remove endometriosis, that could take away enough of your ovary that you could have ovaries that are not functioning as well. That could get you into the premature ovarian sufficiency range. Or sometimes um, the ovarian blood supply becomes compromised uh, with that kind of surgery and you can go into failure. More commonly, women with premature ovarian failure um, uh, may have uh, some genetic predisposition so that women who have um, what we call a partial or mosaic uh, Turner's uh, syndrome um, can have a rapid loss of some of their eggs um, so that they go through normal puberty, they go through normal um, early uh, reproductive life, but uh, lose uh, menstrual function in their 20s or, or 30s. Um, that can be diagnosed by doing a test of your chromosomes and trying to make that, that kind of diagnosis. Um, it may be that although you stopped having normal menstrual function, even on a genetic basis, there could still be a few follicles remaining, um, and sometimes we can scare them up uh, with uh, some, some treatment, sometimes we can't. Um, if after best efforts uh, you can't produce any follicles or any eggs and your only real reliable way of uh, achieving your pregnancy uh, would be with donor eggs.
But let's talk about some of the things we might do uh, short of that. We've seen women uh, who uh, were told they had premature ovarian failure, but in fact had uh, an adrenal um, abnormality um, where they weren't making sufficient androgens to support their uh, ovarian function. And we've been able to completely restore ovarian function by providing androgens like DHEA uh, or, or testosterone. Those aren't very common conditions. Uh, conditions, but uh, we do see them because of the population that we see. And they're easy enough to diagnose with some blood tests. In women where all the hormones uh, appear to be normal, where the adrenals functioning uh, normally, um, if you might have one of these genetic related causes of premature ovarian failure, uh, you may still have some isolated remaining follicles that we can scare up. We've been uh, working uh, experimentally with uh, plasma, uh, I'm not sorry. We've been working experimentally with platelet-rich plasma um, and uh, have found in some cases that uh, we can uh, spike some follicle development, even in women who haven't had their period for uh, 20 years. Um, it's unusual. Only about a third of people that we've treated so far have, any, have had any kind of response, but it's uh, remarkable when we do see that response, and, and we've even gotten people to uh, produce eggs and, uh, and have embryo transfers. Um, it's uh, too early yet to say whether that's a very effective way of actually treating fertility. Obviously, uh, using donor eggs is a surer way uh, to achieve a baby, but some people are really committed uh, to doing everything they can uh, trying to use their own eggs.